Alright, so let's take a little bit of time to talk about some of the basics of probability. Um, at first, um, for our first kind of go with this, we're going to look at the addition rule, and then after that we'll discuss the multiplication rule. Um, the addition rule is pretty straightforward. It just says the probability of event A or event B occurring is just simply the sum of those two probabilities. And so the example that you might remember is that we looked at um, rolling dice and those two dice were of two different colors um, all the way down to um, values 1 through 6 and those two dice, I'll only draw part of this table roll those two dice you could either um, roll the blue first and get a value and then you could roll the second die which would be the red and get a value and so when looking at those when you roll those two dice you could get a sum of two by rolling a snake eyes, uh, rolling snake eyes one and one, or you could possibly roll those dice and get a sum of a three. And so the simple probability rule is something that you guys kind of um, were able to pick up intuitively, more or less, because I could ask you what's the probability um, of these two random events. The random event is you roll the two dice and the sum is equal to a 2 or the sum is equal to a 3. And so probability is largely about counting. And so we needed to look at this and count how many ways we could get a 2 um, and then count how many ways we could get a 3. And when we looked at the probability of getting a sum of 2 or a sum of 3, we saw that um, there were three different ways that they could happen. It was one way to get a 2, and then there were two ways to get a 3. And so we could look at this and determine that the answer was there were three ways to get one of those two random events out of a total of 36 possibilities. Um, so we could just simply add those two probabilities. The probability of getting a sum plus the probability of getting a 3, um, which would be the 1 over 36 plus the 2 over 36, giving us 3 out of 36. Um, so let's just use that rule. Um, and generally we can use um, that rule for quite a few problems, but let's look at when we have to um, make an exception. So, um, let's come up with a simple example. Let's say that we have um, maybe 100 people that are going to be tested and um, we're, we want to see what their blood types are. Uh, and the, so the blood types that we were able to get are going to be these here as shown. And so if you generate this table Um, there were some that were of type O, some people were of blood type A, and some that were of blood type um, AB. And um, and those could be O positive, A, O negative, so that's it's the, the RH factor. So it, they could be certainly either positive or negative, so let's write that here. So that would be RH positive or they could be RH negative. So 
how many were um, how many did we count? So there were 39 that were of this O positive, 35 that were of type A, and that were RH positive. I'm going to change this to make sure that I also include those that were of type B, and then put AB over here. So there were eight in this category, four in this category, six that were O negative, five that were A negative, two that were B negative, and one that was AB positive. Um, so everyone that tested, they were either um, going to be RH positive or they were going to be RH negative. Right? So when we look at the totals of those that were positive, the 39, 35, 8, and 4, um, we would count a total of 86 that were positive. And if we count the negative, we'd see 6, 11, 13, 14. So 14. And that indeed gives us our 100. Also, looking at this, going um, this way, there were 45 that were of type O, 40 that were of type A, 10 of type B, 5 of type AB. And if you add these up, that should also be 100. So 45 and 40, 85 plus 15 gives us 100. Um, I think I put 80 here. So this is a total of 100. Now, um, now that we've done the counting, um, let's see if we can answer a couple of questions. Number one, um, if I put all of these hundred names into a hat and I randomly select one, what's the probability that the person that I select will have, well, will be part of group A? Or this and then what's the probability that that person that I randomly select is not in group A. And then what's the probability um, that that person is not in group A? So we can look at this and, um, and do a count. So how many are actually in group A? We would see that there are 40 out of the total number of individuals. So we're always just looking to count that number and then get a proportion of that number from the whole. So you can look at that P as indicating proportion or probability or percentage, all representing some type of fraction or ratio. So the proportion or probability of finding someone um, who's in group A is going to be the number that are actually in group A out of the total possible um, top possible draws out of this, you know, this this random draw of all these names in a hat. Now what's the probability of finding someone who's not in group A? Well, you just look at the entire whole um, and it would be everyone else that's not in group A. So 100 out of 100 um, is the whole minus those that are in group A gives us the 60 out of 100. So these two are complementary. Um, I won't simplify just yet. Um, I think keeping it like this um, kind of reveals a bit more about the math. So it's, you know, you may want to 
could say it's 40% and 40% and that would be fine but I'll, I'll just kind of continue 40% and then 60% but I'll continue um, and, and not worry so much about simplifying just yet um, how about this question what's the probability of finding someone whose blood type is of type RH negative Again, you just go in and count how many are of type RH negative. And you can see that there are 14. Um, so there's 14 ways of drawing a random name out of a hat um, where we'd end up with someone with an RH negative. So let's look at this one where we're trying to um, determine the blood type of someone who fits in. Um, into these three categories. Um, someone who is of, we want to know the probability of finding someone who's of type A or type O or type RH positive. So if we simply try to do this, A plus the probability of finding someone who's of type O, plus the probability of um, selecting someone randomly whose blood type is RH positive. If we did that, we'd see that these numbers then, um, if we add the probability, look at the probability of selecting someone who is of blood type A, um, that is 40 out of the 100 whose blood type is O, that's 45 out of 100, and whose blood type is also RH positive. Um, so that would be the 86 out of 100. So those numbers, 40, 45, and 86, um, 40, 45, and then 86 are the three numbers. Um, so let's think about that for a second. If we look at those who are of type RH positive, and then if we also consider those who are of type O, and those that are of type A, we would see that in our 45 and 40, we've already counted um, certainly those that are of type O and A, but we've also counted those that were positive. They are already in that group. So that when, when we added the 86, the probability of finding someone who's RH positive, um, we're adding the 39, the 35, and then the 8 and the 4. So we're double dipping here. If you look at where those two kind of overlap, we are double dipping. So I like to say you want to remove that, that double count, the double dip. Um, and so that's where this, um, this rule, the simple addition rule, well not the simple, but the, the, the addition rule of probability says we can't just add those up because if we did, we'd end up with an 85 and 86 um, or 171 out of 100, right? And you can never have a probability that's over 100%. So that's a problem right here. So we've, we've, we've added in some, um, we've counted twice those that are in, um, that are in those two that are also in that group as well. So let's remove them. And that's what this, this rule states. So the way to look at it is um, simply add the edges, the 45 and the 40 is one edge, 86 is the other edge, and where they intersect is typically where you can expect to see a double count. And so it intersects at the interface of the RH and O, where those are both true. So minus um, the probability of the RH positive and O 
minus the probability of RH positive and A and that is where the double dip occurs and so those two numbers would be my um, 39 and my 35 so I'll subtract out the 39 and I'll subtract out the 35 probabilities and so that sum there is going to give us our, our 97 out of 